This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be underground, delving into a dungeon, but this time, we're gonna be in the desert underneath famous pyramids. And while we're down there, not only are we gonna be trying to grab some ancient artifacts, we're also gonna be trying to avoid the mummy, or if it comes near us, we'll be trying to take them out to remove all the curses it's instilled on us. Now, today we're going to take a look at this latest expansion to Clank called The Mummy's Curse. I'm going to show you what's new in this expansion, and I'll see you on the other side. Now, Clank The Mummy's Curse does come with a double-sided board. This is one of the two sides, and one thing you'll notice is that the board is sectioned off into four different sections with different icons. This whole above ground is one section, then this whole section is about right here, this section is in the middle here, and this section is like this. And you saw I just moved this mummy character. This is a big part of this new version. Now you'll notice a new symbol on the board. It looks like this, it's in different spots. Here's two of them. Anytime you cross through one of those, for each icon there, you take a curse, which essentially is gonna be minus two points at the end of the game. There's different other ways you can get curses, but there's also ways and cards to get rid of them, but they're essentially negative points if you have them. Now the mummy acts similar to the goblin in the base game. In fact, they're both out when you play with this, which means it's one of the monsters that you can kill as many times as you want, even multiple times on a turn. Now there's two ways to kill it. You can use two swords. If so, you get four gold, but you also get a curse. Or you can use three swords and remove half of the curses that you have rounded up. After you do that, you're going to roll this pyramid die. Whatever section is at the top, that's where the mummy moves to on the board. Now, in order to defeat that mummy, the player defeating it needs to be in that same section of the board where the mummy is as like this. But let's say that defeated it, re-rolled the die, it went to a snake. So the mummy would then go here, and any players in that section would have to get one of these curses. They'd put it in front of them, and again, it's minus two points. Now, sometimes you might roll it, and it might not even have moved. You may have rolled this. It stays in this section because that's what the die says. This player could kill that mummy again, uh, or it may have moved, and you can actually move in and kill it twice in the same turn. So you can kill it multiple times and it moves depending on what that die shows. A couple other new things in this expansion. There is a now a 10 point monkey where most of them were uh, five points before and now there's a 10 point one you put out. Now there's also the other side of the board which actually gets put diagonally. Quite awesome looking because this is literally the top of the, uh, the above ground pyramid. Then you have the underground down here. Uh, but the board works in a similar way that, of the way I just explained with the mummy and the curses. Now you can see on this board and the other side there's a shop. It looks like this. And now there's a board that this game comes with as the market where you place everything you can buy. Now in that market, in addition to all of the normal market items, you would also add this. There's two of these, and when you get it, you, in you immediately get the heal, and then uh, it's worth seven points at the end, and of course everything in the market here is seven bucks. Now there's four different secrets, two minor, two major. The two minors give you three points, but you must roll that pyramid die, and it moves the mummy as talked about earlier. The chalice gets you seven points, but you gotta roll the pyramid die, and this gets you five coins, but you gotta roll that pyramid die. Now I'm not going to go over all the cards. It comes with 40 new cards, and these cards you'll shuffle into the base game's dungeon deck. And here are some of the different monsters, and the Crocodilian, Scorpion Queen, uh, Whisker Sphinx, the Tomb Snake. Now some of the cards, as they arrive, will also make you roll that pyramid die. Now there's two new devices, and uh, you know a lot of these have to do with removing a curse. So uh, you can, when you use it, you heal and you remove a curse or you can draw four cards and take a curse. Some of these is like minus two clank or remove a curse. So a lot of these things have to do with clank still, but also with removing curses. And here's the last sets of cards. There are more that I haven't shown you, but I did show you a quite good deal of them. Uh, look at this, the tomb robber. Hey, if you have an artifact, you get two coins. Uh, here, you can remove a curse. Here's the ones that you essentially get for points. You buy them for points towards the end. Uh, we have other things that allow you to teleport. And then if you have the crown, you may ignore icons and tunnels this turn, things like that. All right, well, there was Clank the Mummy's Curse. Now, this is the second expansion for the base game of Clank. Obviously, you need to have the base game uh, to do this. The first expansion was called Sunken Treasures. It was an underwater theme. This has that Egyptian theme with the pyramids that I love. I tend to like that sort of 
desert theme, the mummies, the, you know, the pyramids. I typically like the Egyptian theme, so I like that here. Uh, it comes with that double-sided board, which, you know, the, like, like the main Clank game and like the first expansion, a uh, double-sided board. And it's really cool because one of them is sort of like you use it the normal way, like, uh, like you would a normal board. Uh, but then when you flip the board over, it's sort of like a diagonal pyramid. And it looks really cool the way that just kind of fits that way. It fits the theme, it fits the board does something different with it but again you're getting basically another two different board layouts to play with so if you have the base game and the first expansion in this now you have like six different boards you can use so again it's adding more variability to the game uh, i really like how they use the curses in this so you have curses from movement so maybe there's a, a place that you want to get to and it's really easy or it's it's basically you know it's very advantageous to go there but it's gonna cost you those curses, sometimes one, sometimes two. And you're looking at these different ways to go and you're like, okay, well, I need a key to go this way. This way I need to fight a monster. This way I need to get a curse. Well, I don't have any swords. I don't wanna take a damage, I'm almost dead. This way I don't have any keys yet. I can't go that way. This way's really good, but it costs a curse. This other way, uh, it doesn't cost anything, but it doesn't really get me where I need to go. I guess I'll pay the curse. I'll go through, I'll take a curse. And you're thinking, well, was that really worth two or four points depending on uh, how, you know, whether it was one or two curses? So I like that they added curses to the movement of another thing to think about as you're you know, maneuvering your way through the dungeon. I also like that you're getting curses from the mummy. So you know, uh, when someone kills the mummy, you gotta be in that same area of the mummy. So it's such a cool thing because at the beginning, the mummy starts way in the bottom right. And then as you delve down, certain cards will come out that cause you to roll uh, the mummy. Certain secrets come out that cause you to roll the mummy die. And then if someone kills the mummy, uh, they're going to roll the die. And if it shows up where you're at, well, you get a curse. However, if you're able to get to where that mummy is, then you're able to kill it and you know you have a different thing. You can still kill the goblin, but now you can kill the mummy and either take a bunch of gold with two swords or you could spend three swords and remove half your curses rounded up, which is really cool. Because if you've been like running around, going through curses uh, and getting curses in all different ways, and you need to get rid of them, we can go hunt down that mummy and be able to get that up. So it does add a little bit of randomness to the game because you're not sure where the mummy's gonna show up sometimes after someone kills it. Uh, but it's, it's a really cool aspect of another layer of things to think about. And it doesn't completely change the game, it just adds a little twist that gives you another thing to think about. Uh, the big thing here is a lot of new cards. So, you know, if you've played Clank a lot and you know, you're very familiar with the cards and you want something fresh, this is gonna add a lot of that because you're mixing this deck in with the base game. Uh, and so you might not even see all of these cards each time you play, depending on how long you play and how many players you're playing with. But you, you know, the, the dungeon deck's gonna be bigger now and you're gonna have these cards sort of coming through with the new monsters, the new things. A lot of them have to do with curses as I showed. Um, now the new market item, this is sort of a, it, it gives you, you know, a health and seven points. Again, nothing that's going to change the game drastically, but it does give you one more option to, hey, maybe all the crowns are gone and you really want points and you need health. Well, there you go. There's something extra to think about. Again, nothing earth shattering here, but another twist to the game. So overall, uh, I really like this expansion. Uh, let me get to the negatives first. Uh, the only negative I can think of is, you know, setup and takedown separation time is definitely noticeable with the cards and the secrets. You know, because you're taking these cards and you're basically, uh, you know, mixing them in with the deck. That doesn't take that long. Setup isn't as bad as takedown. Because you're going to mix them all in. You're going to just take the new tokens, mix with the new ones, put them out. Setup's not that bad. It's sort of the takedown because you got to go through all of the cards. Uh, I didn't, I'm not sure if I pointed this out in the video, but in the text window, there's a little pyramid in the background that you can see. So you can quickly see which cards to take out, but you've got to go through all of the deck, which with the pyramid cards is quite a bit. You got to sort them out and then you got to find the right tokens, right? The right major secrets, the right minor secrets that are from uh, the, this expansion and separate them out in case you, you know, I'm assuming that you want to keep them separate. You won't play with this every game because you'll play Clank. Maybe you'll play the base game. Maybe you'll play Sunken Treasures. Maybe you'll play this. So you'll probably want to separate them out like I did after my, uh, my most recent play. And it does take some time to do that. Uh, so that's the only negative I can think of. Now, overall, we've got Clank the base game. You know, if you really like Clank and you don't yet have an expansion, you're going to ask, well, which one should I get? This or Sunken Treasures? treasures. To me, they're both about the same. They're both enjoyable. Neither of them totally change the game, but they do give you a lot more variability. Uh, some new things to think about, um, you know, like the, the sunken treasures had the, the cool water and, and the scuba, where you get the scuba and you can stay underwater longer, where this one has the whole thing about the mummy and the curses. So it's, it's both of them do about the same thing, which is gives you a lot more variability, gives you new things to think about, gives you new layouts, gives you new cards, some new secrets, things like that. 
Both of them are about the same though as to how much it's changed the game and how enjoyable they are. So they're both about the same. So I would say go with whichever one you, you, know, you enjoy the theme better of. Now, if you already have Sunken Treasures, do you need this? Well, that's really up to you. If you've played Clank and the expansion enough to the point where you feel like I need more, I need more, then this is great. But if you're one of the people that like buys a bunch of expansions and never plays them, do you need this one? It, do it doesn't change it as much as say what Clank in Space did on its own. Uh, but still, this is a, a, a good way to give yourself some more variability. Uh, in the end, I still like Clank in Space the best and that's a different sort of monster, not kind of out of the scope of this video. But since it is a Clank game, I need to at least bring it up. That's been my favorite all along because of the, how many things they changed from the base game. But these are more incremental steps. Uh, and if you have the base game, this is kind of a no-brainer. If you've played it a lot and you want some new things, no-brainer, this is the Mummy's Curse. This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.